Welcome to Excel Graphs Beyond the Default. How to create well-designed Excel graphs. The goal for this course is simple. It's to take you beyond the default design graph options that Excel has to offer. So what will you learn in this course? Once you've completed the course, I hope to have taught you three things. One is preparation, or how to prepare your data before you graph. Once you've prepared your data, you need to be able to organize it so it's efficient to graph. And lastly, we want to show you how to execute and make these well-designed graphs in Excel using the tools that are already available to you as well as your existing skill set. Some of the topics that I'll teach you in this class are how to organize and clean up data, how to use VLOOKUPs to make sense of the data, and then also using pivot tables to summarize data to make graphing a little bit easier. Also, how to design your graphs for your audience. We will also cover graph formatting best practices, how to use the graphs you create in Excel outside of Excel, so in PowerPoint or Word or even pasting in an email. As an added bonus, we'll also look at how to design graphs like the pros. We'll look at a graph from The Economist magazine as well as the well-known website 538. All this and so much more. So a little bit about me. I'm an analyst by trade and work in Excel every single day. I have 10 plus years of Excel experience and consider myself to be advanced. My background is in finance and healthcare as an analyst. So why did I create this course? Well firstly, Excel has so much more to offer in terms of charts and graphs than just the default options. And secondly, with just a little bit of effort, you can create well-designed graphs that will impress your coworkers and your boss. Thank you for choosing to take this course. I appreciate your time and effort. Now let's get started. All right, let's dive into some data. So before we actually start graphing the data, what we need to make sure is that our data is what I like to call graph worthy. So graph worthy data to me means that the data is well organized and is easily translatable into a visual format such as a chart or graph. So what we have here is some data issued by uh, New York State that is based on traffic tickets uh, written in uh, New York City by the New York City Police Department. So it uh, covers a period of time uh, in 2013, so one year of data. And what we have from left to right is the actual violation description, so what the ticket was written for, the year it occurred, as I said, 2013, the violation month, uh, which you'll notice is actually uh, in numerical uh, format, the age of the individual at uh, when the violation occurred, uh, the state of license, so where the individual was licensed, their gender, and then the actual ticketing organization or the, uh, the police department that actually wrote the ticket. So what you'll see is that it's, it's pretty organized. This data is not bad. But what we need to do is make sure that there's no gaps or anything or no missing data to make sure that we're not going to actually uh, break our graph. So what I'm going to do is highlight row 1. And I'm going to go to the filter option up in the uh, top right hand part of the ribbon. I'm going to click on filter. And what I'm going to do is just go through each of these and see if there are any blanks. So as you can see for the violation description, there aren't any blanks. For the violation year, I only see 2013, so no blanks there, we're all good. Violation month, nope, nothing, one through 12, makes sense. Age of violation, all right. Ah, there we go, so there's some blanks. So we need to get rid of those blanks. So how are we gonna do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is come up here and select all this box, we need to uncheck that and then we'll go down to the blanks. So what this is gonna do is only give us the blanks. So we'll click OK. As you can see, there are roughly 52 different blanks. So the reason we wanna get rid of these is because what they're gonna do is potentially mess up our data later on. Um, we want our data to be as clean as we can get it. Even if we're not gonna necessarily graph the age of violation, we wanna make sure that if we would like to later on down the line, that we have the option to do so. So by cleaning up the data up front, we give ourselves options going forward. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select this cell, 
drag my mouse down all the way down to the selection that I want to cover or the area I want to delete these blanks from. I'm going to hit Alt and I'm going to hit the semicolon key. What that is going to do is only highlight the cells that I want or the rows in this case that I want to delete. From there I can do one of two things. I can hit Control minus on the keyboard. It may take a few seconds, but it will delete all those offending rows that we want to get rid of. Or what I can do is right click and delete row. That's going to accomplish the same thing. As you can see, it took a few seconds, but at the end of the day, it did that correctly. So now, if we go back to our data and select all, you're going to notice that there's no blanks in here. We got rid of those blanks and we got rid of that uh, anomalous data. So I can click over here, we come back to the agent violation and our data for that particular selection is clean. State of license, let's just make sure there's nothing in here that's causing us any issues or will cause us any issues and there's nothing there. Gender, male, female, we're all set. And then the finally the police agency that issued the ticket. We're good to go. Alright, so what we've done here is we made sure that our data is clean and graph worthy. So our data now is graph worthy and ready to be graphed. But there's one thing that I'm noticing here that I don't really think is conducive to graph worthy data. If there's one thing I can change to make it easier to graph this data, it would be related to this violation month. As you can see, these are in numerical format. So six means the sixth month of the year, so June of 2013. You know, that's all well and good, but I want to actually have the month name on our graph. I don't necessarily want it just to be a 1 through 12 uh, on a, one of our axes. I don't think that's necessarily clean. I don't think that gives the uh, consumer of this information as much information as they need. So let's change that. So we're going to come over to a blank area of our, of our spreadsheet. And what we're going to do is put the numerical values of each month, so 1 through 12. So the way I'm going to do that is just type 1, 2, and 3. And then to make things easier, I could just highlight that section in this little box over here. I can drag that down, and that's going to give us 1 through 12. So as you can see, there's my month values, 1 through 12, so 1 being January in this case. So what I want to do is actually now provide the actual month name to these numerical values. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to type in 1 forward slash 31 dash 2013. So now I have my date format. So my month now for January or the first numerical value for that particular year is now January 31st, 2013. And instead of typing these manually all the way down, what I'm going to do is use a formula. So this formula is known as the end of month formula. It just makes our lives a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is enter equals in the next cell down. And I'm going to type in EO and then hit tab. And what that's going to do is bring up the end of month formula. From there, I can select my start date, which it's asking for highlighted here in blue. And I'm going to click on the cell above it. So now my start date is basically saying that I'm starting with January and I want to do something with January related to the end of the month. So I'm going to put a comma in there and then I'm going to enter the number one. So what that's doing is it's saying that I, my starting point is January 31st, 2013. And from that point forward, I want to go one month ahead to give me the end of the month of the next month. So if I hit enter, you're going to see that it's going to come up with a numerical value for the month of February. What I can do again is just highlight this little box here, and you see that, that little black cross that's going to come up? And I can pull this all the way down to the 12, and you'll see that these are now in numerical month format. So to get these in actual format of a month, what I can do over here is come up to the tab over here and select short date and that's going to give me the correct format for that date. So as you can see now each of the months is correctly formatted. I can do this another way by highlighting that selection all the way down and hit control 1 and what that's going to do is bring up the format box. I can come and select date 
and then I can select any format I want. I'm going to go with the, with uh, this one just because that's similar to what we had up here with January 31st. Click OK. And what you can see is that now all our months are formatted correctly. And now we can go ahead and use this data to correctly format the rest of the months. Now that our months are formatted correctly, how do we actually get this into our data set? Well, I think the easiest way to do this is through something called a VLOOKUP or a vertical lookup. So what I'm going to do is click on column D over here and I'm going to right click and click insert and what that's going to do is, is insert a column to the left of the column that I chose. There's another way to do this by highlighting the same column D but then using the keyboard by using the keyboard shortcut of control plus. From there I'm going to label this column with the heading, so let's actually be a little bit more formal and, and correct and use the word month. From there, as I said, the easiest way to do this is to actually use a VLOOKUP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in equals VLOOK, hit tab again, and what that's going to do is bring up the formula menu for us to enter what we're looking for related to the VLOOKUP. So what I'm looking for lookup value in this case or what I'm trying to find is the numerical six here but I want its monthly value or the actual month value so that's my lookup value so I'm gonna do a comma and then I'm gonna come over here to the right and highlight this section over here which is my lookup table array where I'm going to find the actual monthly value for the numeric uh, when I'm going to find the actual monthly value for that particular numeric value. So what I have to do here is I need to lock that section. So you see how those formulas are highlighted in green? I want to make sure that my VLOOKUP is not going to look outside of that box. The way to do that is to click F4. F4 is going to lock those cells. And as you can see, now that box is locked. The dollar signs in this case indicate that it is locked. From there, I'm going to hit comma again, and I know my column index number is, here's my first column, right, that it contains the numerical values. Let me get rid of that. Here's my first column that contains the numerical values, and here's my second column. So I want to look in the second column. So one, two. So I'm going to hit two, and then I'm going to do false because I'm looking for the exact match. I don't want anything close. I want the exact match. From there, I'm going to hit enter. And you can see from here, it's pulling in the numerical value for that month. From there, again, I can use our fancy little black box here and double click, and that'll drag that formula all the way down to the bottom. So as you can see, these are numerical values, but what I can do here again is do come up here to the format on the, the ribbon and choose the short date, and that's going to give me my actual numeric value. So now we've learned how to format the month based on a numerical value and use the VLOOKUP to find the actual month value for that numerical value. We're finally ready to graph our data. All of our legwork is going to pay off because our data is now clean and summarized in a format that is easily translatable to either a graph or a chart. So what we're going to do is click on a blank area of our spreadsheet and then come up to the insert section of the ribbon. As we've learned in previous lessons, we need to select the correct graph for the data type that we're looking at. And since this is time series data or data that is related to a particular set of time and has two components to it, male and female, I'm going to go with either a column or a line graph. Let's start with the column and then work our way forward from there. So what I'm going to do is click on this down arrow key, select the 2D column graph. So from there we can actually uh, format this in any way we want, but just the plain old 2D column graph is going to work well. So what that's going to do is bring up a blank canvas for us to work from. We know that this is a 2D column graph because that's what we selected, but right now it has no data in it. So we need to bring some data in it, but first let's set up our canvas to look a little bit better than what it does. So what we're going to do is right click and click on Format, Chart Area. From here we're going to select the fill. For me, 
solid fills look, work well, but with neutral colors. So I tend to stick with this gray section here on the left. I'm going to go with the second one down here. So it's, uh, it's a little bit darker than white, but it just gives us a nice background to work with. From there, we're going to go to border color, and I prefer no border. I think it gives a little bit more cleanliness to the graph. Border styles, we're not going to worry about that. Shadow, we're not really going to do anything with. And 3D format, we're not going to do anything with. So we can just click close from here. So what this has done is given us a blank gray canvas to work from. But now we need to add a little bit of data. So what we're going to do is right click again and do select data. From here, we can click on the add button and choose the series name that we're looking for. So in this particular case, we're going to start with female because that's the first data set we have. So let's click on cell C2 to bring in the heading. This is going to bring in the female heading for our data set. And then we can click on the series values to select the series values by clicking on the selection arrow here. And we can highlight all of these selections in the female column in column C. From here, we're going to click OK. So we need to make sure that our axis is bringing in the correct time frame. We're going to click on the horizontal category axis labels and bring in the month range. So you can just do that by dragging down here in column B and that'll bring all of the months and as you can see our graph is starting to populate. And then we can click OK. That brings us back to the uh, data source wizard and then let's click OK again to move forward. So this is all well and good and we brought our female data in but to me this doesn't really look so good. So let's spruce it up a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is delete a few of these labels. We can come back and add them in later on. So here what we have is a graph that includes all of our female data by month and then the count of violations issued for that particular gender. But as you can see there's some white space here and some different coloring and that sort of thing. So let's actually format and change this white space here. So what we're going to do is right click and click on format plot area and then we're going to change our fill to a solid fill and if you recall we selected this number two here on the gray left hand side let's do that and click OK we're not going to worry about the border colors or anything else as we did before so what that does is make sure that we have consistent formatting across our particular data sets now let's make sure these labels look a little bit better so what we can do is just use our text editor up at the top here in the ribbon and let's change the color of these. Let's make them this, this dark um, gray over here. That just makes it look a little bit different and adds a little bit more of some consistency to the graph. You can see we're already starting to get a little bit better here. The next thing we want to do is clean up our axis a little bit. I'm not really fond of this gray here. So let's get rid of it. Let's go to format axis by right clicking and then go to the line color section. What we're going to do is get rid of the line. This is going to make it a little bit cleaner and give us a little bit more contrast. As you can see, we're getting there already. That just makes it a little bit cleaner. So while we're on this axis, so we've cleaned up this axis. Before we move any further, let's add the mail data. So I'm going to right click and do the same thing, select data. I'm going to go to add and then I'm going to add the series name of mail in cell D2 and then I'm going to select the data set in column D. What this is going to do is bring in the mail data and as you can see uh, probably as expected <laughs> the males are issued a little bit more traffic violations for each month than the females are. I'm going to click OK to select this data and then one more thing we need to do is make sure that we're consistent with our uh, horizontal axis labels so I'm going to click edit and bring in the month again and then I can click OK. So now that we've got our data and our axis is a little bit cleaner, let's format these grid lines a bit. So what I'm going to do is right click and click on Format Grid Lines. On the line color, I'm going to go to Solid Line. And I'm going to choose a line that is a little bit darker than our background, but not too much darker. What this is going to do is just give us a nice little contrast between the actual background and the data and it's still going to make the data pop but it's just going to bring it out a little bit more. So now that the background for our graph is formatted the way we want it, we can move on to formatting the actual data points and make those a little bit more presentable. 
So we're going to right click on our female data points and go to format data series. This is going to give up all of our options here to choose how we want to set this up. I'm going to go to fill and I'm going to choose solid fill. In this case I'm going to select a light blue for the females just to make it a little bit less obtrusive. And I'm going to click close and then I'm going to format the data series for the males by clicking right clicking and then go to the format data series and going to the fill. And what we'll do here is we'll click solid fill and then we'll go to one of these little greens over here sort of a light green. What this is going to do is add just a little bit better visualization to the data. So as you can see instead of using the, the default options in Excel for the graphing what we've done here is added a little bit more color and a little bit more formatting to make things stand out. Alright, so our data is graphed. Perfect. But it doesn't really tell us what our data is about. So what we need to do is add some data labels in here and make it a little bit more specific to what we're trying to do. Uh, I'm going to increase the size of our canvas just to give us a little bit more space. I'm going to click on the graph. So let me do that again. I'm going to click on the graph. And then this is going to give me a little bit more room to wheel with. So what I'm going to do is bring this down. And this allows us to give some, some space up here to uh, work with our titles and that sort of thing. So I'm going to click on the graph again, and I'm going to come up to the ribbon here and select the layout function. And this gives me all of the options related to the graph. So it's got my, uh, I can insert a picture as a background, shapes, text boxes, anything like that. So what I'm going to do is come to the chart title, and I'm going to click on this above chart section here. And that's going to give us the name of the chart, and it's going to display it above the chart. So it's not going to overlap our chart. So as you can see here, I've got the chart title it came in here so let's move this all the way to the the left here I, I like to align it a little bit better so it, it gives us the information and this data is related to traffic tickets issued in 2013 for males and females by month so what I'm gonna do is type in a title that is similar to that so I'm gonna do NYC traffic traffic tickets 2013 let's get rid of that traffic tickets 2013 and I'm gonna hit enter to do another line and I'm gonna do uh, female and male comparison Ooh. as you can see this formatting is not great so let's fix that. I'm going to highlight the whole section. I'm going to come to the home section of the ribbon. I'm going to left justify the title. And I'm going to reduce the size a little bit. From there, I'm going to drag it back to where we wanted it before. And then I'm going to reduce the size of the male and female comparison a little bit because it's sort of like a subheading. Need it to stand out as much as the actual title of the graph. So now we need to add what this data actually is. So what is the uh, blue bars represent? Or what do the green bars represent? So I'm going to click on my graph again, go to layout, and then I need to bring in my legend. So what I'm going to do is bring in my legend and put it in just at the right over here. From there we can drag it anywhere we want. So I'm going to click on the actual legend and then bring it up to the top here. That to me is just a clean display of the actual legend. So let's get that right there. So what we've done here is we've created a clean, simple view of New York City traffic tickets issued in 2013 comparing males to females. But what happens if you want to look at this a little bit differently? What happens if you don't like the bar graph? You want this to be a line graph. Well, we can do that relatively easily. So what we're going to do is click on the graph, control C, to copy it, or you can also do this through the uh, the right click copy. And what we'll do is we'll come down here and we'll paste in underneath Control V, or we can use the uh, again the right click paste. What we'll do first is click on the male green data, and we'll right click and then we'll go change series chart type. What this is going to do is bring all of the different options for us related to the graphs that we can choose. So uh, knowing that this is time series trended data, we can use the line graph. Let's click on that. And what that's going to do is change the bar graph that we just did 
to a line graph. Let's do the exact same thing for the females. So we want to do right click, change series chart type, and then click line. And as you can see, there we go, now we have a comparison between males and females uh, in a line graph format. You'll notice that our, our uh, legend is a little bit messed up here, but we can fix that easily by just dragging that like that. So let's uh, change the colors here and get this a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to right click on the red male line, and I'm going to go to Format Data Series, and I'm going to go to Line Color, then click on Solid Line, and let's use the same uh, green that we had before here. So let's use that. Click on that, and that gives us the same green that we were using before for the males. Let's go to Line Style and get this line looking a little bit better. Let's change this to a three point. That just gives us a little bit of thickness to the line. Actually, maybe we do three and a half. Not 33 and a half. Maybe we do three and a half. Just gives us a little bit more thickness here. Let's smooth it out a little bit. What this is going to do is give it a little bit less of a chop to the line. So if I click smooth line, it's going to give it a little bit more rounded edges compared to what it is a little bit choppy there. So let's click OK and close it. I think we're good formatting that one. Let's go format our female line here, and we can go right click format data series, and let's go to the line color again, solid line, and let's use that same blue that we had before. Now going to the line style, let's use three and a half point, because that's what we're using for the male, and then we'll also do a smooth line. So what we've done here is we've created a line graph comparison between male and female for traffic tickets issued in New York City in 2013. It's just another way to look at the data. It's a little bit uh, maybe cleaner in some cases and a little bit more of a trend analysis rather than a comparison analysis. So we've taken an existing graph and we've transformed it into a different type of graph that presents the data in a completely different way. So many times our presentations call for different color graphs based on the color schemes of a, an existing presentation. So if your company has a particular color scheme that you're working with, or if you prefer dark backgrounds uh, as compared to light backgrounds, then you need to tweak the data a little bit. And this is pretty easy. It just depends on choosing the right color scheme that you're going for. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this graph using Control C and then Control V to paste it. And I'm going to paste it just to the right of this other one. I'm going to do the exact same thing for this graph over here, copy, and then click here and paste it into this empty area. What we've done here is we've created another copy of the exact same graphs. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on this graph over here and format chart area. And what we'll do here is we'll make this a darker graph with a black background. So let's click solid fill black click close and then we'll do the exact same thing for the plot area so where the actual data is plotted to fill and we'll come here and we'll do the black so whereas this data on the graph here is a little bit more subdued this makes the data pop a little bit what we need to do here is format this text by just coming back up here to our ribbon here and selecting white that'll make it stand out a little bit more same with our axis here we need to make sure that we've got that in white and then same with our data labels same with our data headings, we need to make sure that that's white, and then also for our legend, let's do that white. So what that's done is just made this data pop a little bit more. We can do the exact same thing here, and let's actually change this to a little bit more of a different color scheme. So let's go to Format Chart Area, and for this one, let's kind of go in the middle between the black and the gray. Let's go with a little bit of a uh, light blue here, or let's go with a little bit of a dark blue here. And what we'll do is we'll click close and we'll do the same thing for the plot area and we'll select that same blue here right in the middle and what that's going to do is give us a blue background I would suggest that we change the uh, the formatting on these on the axis titles here to black do the same thing here let's do the same thing with the grid lines let's make them black just make them stand out a little bit more Let's do the exact same thing with the axis here. So let's format axis by right clicking format axis and then we'll go to the line color and we'll do the solid line and make it black as well. So that has made everything here black. 
So you can see the green stands out really well with this background. The blue, not so much. So maybe we change this to a different color by formatting data series, right click, let's go to line color, and I think we need something equally as bold. So what we'll do is we'll maybe go with a purple here. So that makes both the male and female data stand out on that blue background. So what we've done here is we formatted the graphs to be conducive to different presentation styles based on whether you're going for a lighter color scheme or a darker color scheme. And it's relatively easy because all we have to do is change the background and then tweak a few colors depending on the color scheme that we're going for. So the data you grow off in Excel is not only functional in Excel. It's functional in many different programs and for many of us that means translating your charts and graphs into PowerPoint presentations. So for the most part, most people just take the graphs and copy them into the PowerPoint presentation. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But what this does sometimes is create challenges as far as formatting is concerned. So what I'm going to do to illustrate this is click on my graph. I'm going to hit Control C or right click and go uh, copy. And I'm going to go to a blank PowerPoint presentation I have here. From there, I'm just going to paste the data using Control V. So it looks good, doesn't it? Well, yes, for now. But this poses a couple challenges for us. You can see that this data is live. I can click on it. So if I change the size of this, everything is going to go with it. So you can see my headings are now bleeding into the graph. My legend is a little bit screwed up. So I don't really like that. I think that there's no need to create and paste live data into a PowerPoint presentation. So we're gonna go back to Excel and click on our graph, copy it, and then go back to the blank PowerPoint presentation. And what we can do here is one of two things. We can right click and go paste, which is just gonna do that. Or we can use a paste special shortcut by clicking Alt, E, S, and what that's going to do is bring up a paste special menu. Now this is going to give me a few options. My preferred way to paste this is to paste it as a JPEG image or a GIF image. What this is going to allow it to do is be pasted as a picture. So if I change the size of this graph, my formatting and my legends and my titles and everything else are going to stay the same. It's not going to mess up. This gives us a couple of options. One, we can resize it however big or small we want it to. And then additionally, if somebody's editing this PowerPoint presentation, the likelihood of them uh, deleting data or impacting your graph from a data quality perspective is slim to none. Now this is not only applicable to PowerPoint. You can do this in email, Word, or anything else. So I suggest that if you're gonna paste your graphs from Excel into another program, that you paste them as an image. All right. So in this part of the course, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to look at two of the most well-respected data visualization sources out there. And we're going to start with The Economist. So The Economist is a weekly newspaper that has been published since 1843. So it's been around for quite a while. Uh, one of the things they're definitely known for is the way that they visualize data. Uh, it's a very well-respected publication uh, that covers topics ranging from finance to politics. So let's get started looking at uh, how we can create graphs that are similar to the way The Economist creates graphs. So what I've done here at the top section is taken the liberty to go and look at a few things related to the way that The Economist does their graphs. Um, so I've looked at the color schemes, I've looked at the font, and I've looked at a few of the nuances that make The Economist graph so well known. So if we look at the background here, each of these numbers going across from left to right is the RGB categorization of numbers or the, the way the color scheme works out from a red, green, and blue perspective. Um, so we will be plugging each of these values in to uh, achieve the correct color scheme. So we got the background, the axis color, the marker color, which is represents, for example, here these dates as far as years are concerned. 
Then we've got the Economist Red, which is their signature box up here in each corner, uh, each left-hand corner of the graph. Their light blue color, which is here for the other category. The medium blue, which is they use here for the apps category. And then finally, this dark blue uh, graph uh, category here that's used for the music category. So let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is come up to insert and from here we can choose the area graph and just a plain 2D area graph will do for right now. So once we click that it'll come up with our blank canvas here and the first thing we're gonna do is make this a little bit bigger but then we can go ahead and right click and go to format chart area so we can format the background. We're gonna select the solid fill here and then go to the color and then choose more colors. From here we're going to go to custom and then we can choose our RGB values here in order to match the background color of the economist. So we'll start with 195 and then we'll go to 215 for the green and then finally for the blue 227. So let's click OK and then close. And As you can see this is starting to mimic the actual economist background here. Let's do one more thing before we move on. Let's remove the line in the background. So we'll go to Format Chart Area again by right-clicking, and then go to Border Color and do No Line. And we'll click Close. This just gives it a cleaner look. So the next thing we'll do is actually start adding some of our data. What I've done is created some dummy data over here. Now this is not obviously the exact data uh, that the economists use. We don't have uh, that information, but in order to make it look the same, I created some dummy numbers that uh, are a proxy for what I think the numbers should be, and will, you'll see it'll come out close to what the economist is graphing here. So let's add some data. Let's right click and go to select data, and then what we'll do is we'll click the add button here, and we can go to the series name, and let's start with the other category close that out and then let's select some data here. Let's select the data points all the way down from 2006 to 2015. Close that out and then click OK. Let's also add in the years here for the horizontal axis label so we'll click edit and then we'll come down over here to our left hand side and scroll down and bring all the way from 2006 to 2015 the years here. Let's click OK and then let's click OK again. As you can see, this is starting to take shape. We're nowhere near looking like the Economist graph, but we're getting there. So let's delete some of these uh, peripheral items right now. We don't need the heading. We'll come back and get that. And then we don't need the legend as well. We don't need that right now as well. So next, let's format this white background here to be uh, the same color as the, uh, the foreground. So we go right click, format plot area. Let's go to solid fill, and then it's going to automatically uh, bring in that light blue color or the economist background color because we previously selected that and that was our last color that we brought in so we've got that all set let's click OK now let's uh, click on these axis labels here let's do a little bit of bolding so control B for bold and then again on the uh, vertical axis control B for bold while we're at it let's right click on this vertical axis here and go to format axis you'll see that the economist over here has their axis broken out by twos right now our major unit is one we'd like to change that to two so we can mimic the economist click change that to two and then click close and then you'll see we are here um, we've got the incremental increase on our vertical axis of two instead of the one that we had before so next Let's change some of these axis colors here. You'll see that the Economist does not have a vertical line showing here. There isn't a line here. So let's do the same thing. Right click again, format axis. We can go to line color and let's do no line. Click close and you'll see now our line has disappeared so we're much more similar to the Economist graph. Since we've got one data point in here. Let's go ahead and format this data point to be similar to the colors that the economist shows for the other category. So right click, go to format data series, let's go to fill, 
solid fill and then we'll come here and we'll go to more colors from the color selector. So the RGB values for the uh, light blue category here are listed as 95, 198, and then 245. All right, and then you'll notice one other thing if we come back over here to the left of the Economist graph. It has this nice blue outline here. So let's do the same thing on the uh, border colors. So we'll click border colors, then we'll do solid line, and it looks like it's a this dark blue over here will work well. We can go to border styles and we'll change this two point down to uh, one point. Actually, let's go 1.5 just to give it a little bit of thickness. We can click close. So as you can see, we're starting to take a little bit of shape here as far as the uh, graph is concerned. All right, so while we're at it, let's add a second set of data points. So let's right click, go to select data. Let's click add. What we'll do here is change the series name to apps by clicking like that, and then we'll bring in the apps values. I wouldn't worry about these two blanks here. They're automatically going to graph as, as blanks, so we'll ignore that. We'll close this out, and then we'll click OK. And then we'll bring in the years, 2006 all the way to 2015. Click OK, and then OK. All right, you'll see we're starting to get a little bit of uh, extra data in here. So we right click, go to format data series, then we'll go to fill, solid fill, and then we'll bring in these RGB values by going more colors. And we'll get this medium blue over here. So 18, 147, and 212. That brings the medium blue. Again, we'll go to the border color, select solid line, keep it as that blue, border styles. Let's go to 1.5 just to bring in a little bit of contrast there and then we'll click close. All right, we're getting there. Oops, actually I see here that this is not a blue border color, but a white border color to give it the contrast. So let's change that. So we'll right click, format data series, border color, and we'll change it to white. There we go. There's the contrast we're looking for. All right, let's add the third data set. Right click, select data, add, series name, music, close that out, and then we'll select the data points all the way down, click OK, and then we'll bring in the years. Perfect. All right, let's change this green to the Economist dark blue. Format data series, fill. The RGB values for this dark blue Economist are eight. 63 and 90. And this also has a border color of the, of white. So we'll change that to white and then we'll bring this to 1.5 again and click OK. All right, we're getting somewhere. We're starting to get a little bit closer to what the Economist graph looks like. So one other thing I notice here is that the actual lines here are in white. So let's change that. Let's click on the lines, right click, and we'll go to format grid lines. From here we'll choose solid line color and we'll change that to white. And then line style, let's change this to one just to make it a little bit thicker. Then click close. Perfect. We are definitely getting closer. While we're at this, let's add some of the data labels that the Economist has here. So we've got other, apps, and music. Let's start with other. So we'll make sure to select the other category, which is the light blue here. We'll right click and then add data labels. So you'll see that it actually brought in the numerical values here. We're not looking for that. We're looking for the series name. So we'll select the values. We'll select, make sure you select all of them. We'll go to right click. We'll go to format data labels. And then we'll uncheck value and click on series name. And then we'll click close. All right, and we may need to move this around a little bit, so let's bring that up to where it looks good. We'll do Control B to bold that, and then we'll come up to our text editor here, and we'll raise that to uh, about an 11, let's call it. Let's do the same thing for the apps category. Right click, add data labels. Click on the data labels, right click again, format data labels, uncheck value, click series name, and then click close. We'll move this over to 
here where it's more visible. Bold it using Control B, and then we'll come here and we'll change this to 11. One thing you'll notice over here is that this text actually is in white. So let's go back, go back up to the text editor and change this text color to white. All right, now we've got one more category here, which is the music category. We'll right click again, go to add data labels, select the data labels, right click again, go to format data labels, uncheck value, click series name, click close. This is hard to see, so we'll change it to Control B for bold, white, and then bring it up to 11. Perfect. We are getting somewhere. So our graph is starting to look a little bit similar to this economist graph over here. So the one thing you'll see that's missing is this heading over here. So let's add it. So what we'll do is we'll click on the graph, and then we'll bring this down just to make some space on the graph. We'll click on the graph, and then we'll go up to Layout and you'll see this chart title over here. We'll click on it and then we want it above the chart. So we'll do that and then we'll move it over to the left just to left justify a little bit and then we'll name this. So this is going to be Sing and Happy Song. Actually let's follow the same formatting. So Sing and Happy Song and then what we also have is a subheading here which is Apple Services Estimated, estimated revenues, comma, in billions. All right. So let's left justify this whole, whole text by going to home, then left justify. And while we're at it, let's change the size of this subheading here. You'll notice that it is smaller than the actual main heading. So let's do that. Bring that down. Perfect. And then we'll just fix it a little bit by bringing it back up to the left hand side. Bring it up. Bring it up. Let's change this to 16. 16 will work. Let's bring this down a little bit just to give it a little bit more space. And then we're good to go. One thing you'll see here that's a signature of The Economist is this red rectangle here in the upper left hand corner. Just for aesthetic stake, let's do the same thing. So what we'll do is we'll come up to the insert menu. So what we'll do is we'll come up to insert and we'll go to shapes and we'll select a rectangle. And I'll do this outside of the graph for right now and then we'll bring it onto the graph. So we'll create a rectangle that is uh, similar in size to the one shown down here. We'll right click and format that. We'll go to format shape. First thing we'll do is get rid of the line, no line, and next we'll do the fill. So solid fill. We need to go to more colors and choose the RGB values for the Economist Red, which is 230, 0, and then the last one is 25. So you'll see it's got that bright red that absolutely stands out. Now we can bring this onto our graph. We're going to have to resize it a little bit. We'll put it in the upper left-hand corner there. We'll make it a little bit smaller. Actually, you know what? We'll leave it like that. Perfect. Now what we've done here is we've created a graph that's very similar to the economist-style graph that we see over here to the left. Now we've created some dummy data to mimic the way uh, it looks and the look and feel. But overall, we've created a graph that includes the signature styling of an economist graph. 538 is a popular blog that's now part of the ESPN family uh, that was started by Nate Silver. Uh, the claim to fame of 538 is they correctly predicted um, all of the results by state for the 2008 presidential election. Uh, one of their claims to fame is also their data visualization. As you can see here, this is one of their signature type graphs. It's very clean, it's minimalist, and it also has great colors. You can see the contrast between the red and the gray there sticks out quite well. So what we're going to do is attempt to recreate this graph. Again, what I've done here is taken the liberty to get all the RGB values for each of the specific graph markers and colors. Uh, this is just to make our job easier here as we graph this. So let's get started. What we'll do is we'll come up to insert 
and we'll insert a line graph. A 2D line graph is fine in this case. So let's select that. That's going to bring up our blank canvas. As you can see, this is white compared to the background here, which is more of a gray. So let's go and change that and right click and go to format chart area. Let's go to solid fill and then we'll select the background color, which is this 237 all the way across here. So we'll go to more colors and we'll do 237, 237 and 237. All right, and you can see our background is now starting to mimic the 538 color scheme here. Let's go to the border color and select no line. This just makes it cleaner and adds some contrast to the between the background of the cells and the actual graph. So um, before we start graphing the data, you can see that this is a trended time series data. And obviously there's quite a bit of data here. Uh, it ranges from 2011 all the way up to 2000. 15. Um, I took the liberty to also create some dummy data here. Now obviously this is not exactly the data that 538 used here to show the jobs gained um, from a year earlier based on seasonally adjusted numbers. Um, but I'm trying to get just the gist or, or uh, to mimic the graph so it comes out uh, looking similar to what 538 produced. So again, the data is not exactly the same. These are dummy numbers, but we're just trying to get the look and feel here. All right, so let's add some of this data. We're going to right click and go to select data. And what we'll do is we'll add the private jobs listing first. And we'll go all the way down to the bottom here. You can do this by holding down shift control and then hitting the down arrow key like I just did, or you can just highlight down with the mouse when you're dealing with a decently sized data set like this you may want to just use the shift control and we're going to click OK and then we'll do the exact same thing for the years here click OK and then we'll click OK now our data is starting to take shape you can see that the private data is, is pretty in line with what we're showing here for 538 but it needs to be cleaned up a little bit let's get rid of this heading we'll come back and add it later and then we'll also the legend First things first, let's format this background so it's not white and it matches the gray over here. So we'll right click, go to format plot area, go to the solid fill, and then it will automatically give us this gray because we've used it recently. Let's click close from there. All right, so we've got our background formatted. And we've got everything good to go as far as the background is concerned. Let's clean up these axes a little bit. So let's start with the vertical axis here. So let's right click and go to format axis. You'll see from the 538 axis here on the, the right hand side, they do uh, increments of one here in the major unit. You can see that ours is a half right here. So let's do increment of one and that'll give us the same scale that they're using over here. Let's uh, go to line color over here while we're in this menu because as you can see from 538, they don't have a um, vertical axis line here so let's do no line let's click OK alright you can see we're starting to get a little bit uh, closer to what 538 is showing here alright so as you can see our axis over here our horizontal axis is formatted in months rather than years so let's change that we can go to right click then go to format axis and then we'll come over here and we'll change our fixed major unit to years and we want to do one year so that'll give us the increments from 2011 all the way up to 2015 in one year increments. What we also want to do is give the position for it to be on the tick marks. That means that our specific uh, data will line up with the actual years. Let's click close here and then you'll see we're starting to get a little bit more um, similar formatting on the axis here to what 538 is showing. While we're on the horizontal axis, let's add the minor grid lines here. So what that's going to do is give us our years up and down um, grid lines here. So similar to what 538 is showing over here. Let's format these grid lines while we're at it and change the color. So let's go to Format, Grid Lines by right clicking. And we'll go to Line Color, Solid Line. And as you can see by the RGB values here, the axis color is this 213 all the way across. So we'll go to More Recent Colors and we'll plug in 
the 213 over here. So now we have our more transparent solid line. So that changes the color of the grid lines. What it did do also is change this vertical axis over here to be gray again. So we need to change that and remove the line here. So we'll go to line color, no line, and then click close. So we're back to where we started. So I think we're ready to add our next data set. Let's right click, go to select data, and then we'll go to add, and we'll add in the total. So the series name will be total. And then we'll go and do our shift control down arrow key to bring in all of the total values. Let's also select the years or the uh, monthly data here and then click OK. And as you can see, we're starting to get some similarities over here to the 538 data. Let's change these colors here. So the red over here represents the total and it is actually red on the 538 graph here but it's not quite the same red so let's change that to a solid line and let's more colors and what we'll do is we'll change this to the red which is 252 0 for the green and 7 for the red nice we're starting to get a little bit closer now we got to change this private series to be this gray over here which is 190 all the way across so let's right click and go to format data series Go to line color, solid line, and then we'll choose more colors and plug in the RGB values of 190 all the way across. Click OK. And as you can see, we're getting real close to 538 style. Let's just clean up these axes a little bit. So let's bold this. Let's bold the year as well. As you can see, the formatting of this axis is not quite the same style. We're not going to get it exact, but let's just get it so we can get the years showing instead of just the months. Let's go to Number, and let's go to Custom, and what we can do here is change this to just to show the year. The YYYYY is going to show just the year. So there you go we've got just the year showing. So what we're going to do next is add in the headings. Let's bring this down just to make some room at the top. I'm going to go to um, layout, add in the chart title. I'm going to do it above the chart and I'm just going to move this over to the left just to be uh, more indicative of the 538 graph and this chart title is jobs gained from a year earlier. And this one also has a subheading of seasonally. Adjusted. So let's left justify this header while we're at it. We'll go to home and then we'll click left justify. And you can see that it's starting to come together here. This subtitle needs to be a little bit smaller, so we'll bring that down to let's say 12. And we'll also unbold that just to make it similar to what 538 is showing here. Okay, good. We're getting a little bit closer here. The one thing that's the signature, so to speak, for 538 is their gray bar down at the bottom of each of their graphs. Let's go ahead and add that in. So what we'll do is we'll come up to insert and we'll add a shape, a rectangle. And what I like to do is come to the bottom of the graph here and just try and line it up the best that I can with the ends here of the graph on the left and the right side. So once we've got that, we'll right click and go to format shape. We'll start with the fill. And as you can see this banner over here, the RGB values are 73, 75, and 77. So it gives us that nice 538 gray. We don't want a line color on it, so we're going to select uh, no line under the line color menu, and I'm going to click close. Cool. We're getting there now. So let's add this source label in here. I'm not going to add the 538 logo in here, but you can add your own logo if you'd like to. 
I'm going to right click and I'm going to edit text and I'm going to go and right justify it over here and I'm going to make sure my caps lock is on and I'm going to type in source just like that. I can highlight it a little bit so I can bold it and then let's make that font a little bit smaller um, to about 10. It's going to give us that source. So what we've done here is we've done our best to imitate a uh, graph from 538 based on jobs data from the period of 2011 to 2015. So this is a nice clean way of displaying data. Um, it's just one of the several types of graphs that you'll find on the 538 website uh, and they are one of the best in my opinion as far as data visualization is concerned. I hope you've enjoyed this course and that you've learned something new, perhaps a few new things that you can apply immediately. Most of all, I hope that I've accomplished the three goals laid out at the beginning of this course to prepare, organize, and execute to create well-designed graphs in Excel. Thank you for your time and attention. I know your time is valuable and I appreciate it very much. It would be great if you could please rate this course and leave your feedback. I look forward to you joining me again in future courses.